And again, we welcome you to STEM Evolution. We have three amazing teachers here today with us. The first is Julie. Julie is a first grade teacher. She sees every learner as an individual. She teaches in a classroom that is flexible and encourages flexible thinking. Her attention to design both supports the learning of students in her room and colleagues in her school. And we have Christy. Christy is a first through fifth grade science teacher. She enjoys engaging with students in the process of discovery through science. She strives to keep kids curious and gives them opportunities to explore, think, and be creative. To provide a space where students can be successful, try, fail, and try again. To help young scientists build the skills that will allow them to observe carefully, organize and explain clearly and analyze thoughtfully to help make sense of it all. And Michael, Michael is here and designs experiences where inquiry-based, experiential and collaborative learning encourages thinkers to look closely, think deeply and wonder incessantly. These experiences build a culture where thinking is valued, visible and actively promoted as part of the daily experiences of all learners. So as you are aware, we are in amazing hands today, and I am so excited to turn it over to this great team to share their work. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Man, we're uh, happy to be here. Uh, we want to kind of uh, frame everything that we're going to talk about today through a lens of product versus process. Um, we do want to say that we have both in our school. Um, we rely heavily on the process, uh, but we do have something that we um, ask the learners to have a kind of a tangible artifact of learning. Um, that's where Seesaw comes in, both in the process side and also the product side. So when we're thinking about the process, uh, we have a um, feedback loop that has been really valuable for teachers and, and our learners here to where um, the posts that we make aren't uh, a static post. We don't post once and it gets shipped off uh, and then we forget about that post and continue on. Uh, you'll hear from, uh, from the teachers later too about how they use that as a continuous feedback loop and it encourages iteration. Um, so we, we have uh, many examples of how divergence um, supports the thinking that we do here. Uh, and we do have products at the end of, um, of our uh, units of study, um, something tangible uh, that, that will show growth over time um, and skill development and, and demonstration of that skill. Um, it does get turned in um, and we try as hard as we can to have it connect to um, what we have just learned and then connect it to what we are going to, uh, going to continue learning. So we do focus heavily on the process uh, and that's something we'd like to invite you into um, our experience. Um, a day uh, in a life at Liggett, um, it, there are so many amazing things happening. Uh, learners are constantly um, using manipulatives, uh, creating uh, examples of their learning through um, making things, through designing things, through uh, creating in the virtual world and sharing with friends and, and getting feedback. And uh, it's a constant uh, cycle of you know, um, having an idea, creating uh, something and designing it, sharing it and getting feedback, uh, creating it again and, and testing uh, everything that you do. And it's not just in our science classes, um, it's, in, it's in every subject area. And today we'd like to talk about um, how the idea of STEAM has evolved from these uh, experiences that happen in silos and have, um, have embraced uh, the things that we do here uh, uh, in our everyday um, product at school. So in this picture, you can see uh, one of my students, uh, they, I know everybody's done uh, paper tower challenges and that kind of thing with uh, STEM before, um, but using that as an inspiration, uh, I kick off the year with a little bit of a study with birds and the kids pick bird names. And it's just kind of a fun way to get everybody comfortable and kick off the year. So this year, after we um, introduced birds, they we kind of made the tower project into a steam project where the kids had just uh, 30 centimeters of tape and a piece of paper and had to try to create a perch that was freestanding for their little birds in the classroom. And you can see there, I made one that was um, 
you know, just out of rolling one sheet of paper. And then the kids had to try to beat mine. And you can see the picture there. He has one that's, you know, quite a bit shorter than the other. That was his their first iteration. Um, then we talked about ideas with the team about what could make it taller. And they came up with a second iteration, which you can see is quite a bit taller. He posted um, showing the improvement that they made and why he thought that um, it had they had been able to make that improvement. So they're thinking about the engineering and then not just doing it one time, but then repeating that process and then sharing it out to uh, the families and friends and talking about that, that teamwork and what they had to change in order to um, make it better. And I think that was like the important part of that process was having that state second step where the kids actually improve and reflect on that improvement. Uh, in this slide, you can see um, they did a little experiment with evaporation and the students each uh, had three different bags, you know, uh, with cold water, warm room temperature water, and then hot water. And they were taking pictures every um, so often so that they could try to see the process of evaporation and which one would evaporate first. So they made predictions. They took pictures to provide evidence of their uh, experimentation and then tried to organize that information and being able to take something, organize it and put it out there um, and then ex use that to help explain your conclusions is a big, um, big part of what we try to do um, with the kids in science. So they did those. Um, they, this is the four students are each from a different group. They each showed their part. And then as a team, they came up with the conclusion in the middle and um, were able to see the, how hot water evaporated quicker. So um, just another opportunity for the kids to look at the process of what was happening, to take it, organize it, and um, then be able to use that information to come to some sort of a conclusion. You know, what I found uh, really interesting about this one is the app smashing involved in creating this post. Uh, each group worked independently um, and, uh, and documented their, their process um, through the photo uh, app on the iPad and created a pic collage. And then those groups got together and compared pic collages and then put four pic collages into one, synthesizing their experience together and then coming up with one statement that said, here's something that unites us all. Uh, and then that's what they chose to post on Seesaw. So it's just uh, really interesting in the ways that the kids are becoming more flexible in choosing the tools that will allow them to uh, express their ideas the best that uh, the best way they want them to to uh, to share them. Okay, um, this is one of probably my favorite uh, project my students have done so far this year. Um, we my class became obsessed with puzzles, and there was a puzzle on our back table um, every single week. And they would come in, or anytime they had some downtime, and they would work on the puzzle. Um, so it became an inquiry project for them. And um, we, we put a couple images, um, different puzzles on the board and kind of talked about, noticed the shape of um, some of the puzzles, noted the, noticed colors in puzzles, noticed how the puzzles fit together. And we decided um, after looking at a bunch of puzzles, why don't we make our own puzzles? Um, so as you can see in the upper left corner, it's one of my students uh, drawing out his design. Um, his puzzle, so all students got to make um, whatever they wanted for their puzzle. Um, on the bottom, it's his uh, actually uh, putting it onto then a piece of wood and, col and um, coloring it. In the middle, you can see what it looked like before we cut it. Um, on the Glowforge, we were able to then um, put the puzzle into the Glowforge, and you can see him in the bottom right corner that he, the um, puzzle was cut into puzzle pieces, and then they were very excited to kind of take the puzzle apart and put it back together and take it home for their families for them to figure out as well. But we were able to share this entire process um, on Seesaw with their families um, and friends so that they can see the entire process that we went through in order to create our own puzzles. Uh, one thing I really loved about this project too is um, it went, it didn't quite go into the use of technology right away. Uh, we did support uh, the kids thinking in um, explaining how they approach uh, doing puzzles um, and really thought about the uh, in, like the individual ways learners in the in Julie's classroom uh, approached a puzzle and some kids looked at the shapes and some kids looked at the colors and some kids wanted to group it by like 
uh, colors or like shapes or, and we had a big discussion on, you know, um, what, is there one way to do it? Is there a best way to do it? Uh, to think about the process of that, went through a, um, a thinking routine called the explanation game, where we put up a really intricate puzzle on the board uh, and thought about um, the, the first graders came up with an explanation of what it was. Um, and actually the, the image we chose to put up was the Glowforge cutting a very intricate um, Amazon jungle uh, puzzle where the puzzle pieces didn't look like your standard jigsaw puzzle. They uh, took on the shape of the trees and the roots and, and the grasses around it. So it was a little bit different uh, from what they were used to, but they were using their previous knowledge to uh, all collectively explain what they were seeing on the screen to get a better understanding of what they were about to do. Um, as you know, as you can see, uh, <laughs> they had a blast. Uh, it was for them to be so into the puzzles that we were bringing into the classroom and then for them to have an art of like a, a puzzle that they made themselves um, was a really uh, um, was a really great experience. And uh, the technology didn't stand in the way. Um, the art just enhanced it. Uh, it was a really great experience from uh, kind of conceptual to to the artifact it was really fantastic. Uh, in this slide, you're looking at a um, just kind of an example of an engineering design process uh, project that the students did. They've been studying about what things sink and float. And so um, I gave them each like, just a ball of clay and asked them to um, you know, set it in the water and, and see if it would sink or float. And a lot of them predicted that it would sink and then they were right. But then we had to do something um, with that uh, thinking and see is there a way we could make it float and so the kids imagined um, several different ideas you can see in step two um, she tried several shapes and then um, once she had a chance to try a few she realized none of those things were working so she had to you know think a little bit more about what could make it work and she came up with um, an idea that finally did so here she is with um, her process. Hi, and I'm in science, and how I made mine float or sink is my first one. This it was like looked like a log, and it and it did not float. It sank, and I did my and then my second one. It. I put it kind of like the like the edges into a curve kind of and it did not float and sink. And I put it kind of like into a square and then it did not float again. And then I put it like in a ball and it did not and it sink. And then I put it kind of like in a canoe shape and it and it and it float and it floated and I got seven pennies and then I got another one and I had three pennies and then my high score was when I made it kind of like a cup shape and I got 12 pennies and bye. <laughs> and so you can really see Madison's thinking and her process um, as she went through and we tried to put together a flow chart that would help encourage that kind of thinking where the kids create something and try again, do a test and share it out and reflect on it and, and then go back through the process again. So uh, it was a pretty successful first attempt uh, at a flow chart like this with second graders and I, I felt like they did a a really good job. This was right at the beginning of the year. So um, it was just fun to see her shapes and thinking change as she went through the process. Uh, I want to give um, Christy a big shout out here because she won't give one to herself, but I think that it's well deserved. Uh, this um, visual was created from uh, an idea that came from the class, uh, but we didn't have a visual that matched the thinking that uh, the kids were doing in the classroom. So um, she brainstormed a couple different ideas, tried a couple out in the class until they found one that really worked, uh, made a template, uh, put it in Seesaw as um, 
uh, as a um, activity uh, and the kids were able to start with the same template and really just fill in their own thinking uh, but follow the thought process of did it work yes go on to the next if not go back and redesign and, and thinking about you know what kind of scaffolds can we put in place for uh, learners in second grade to find meaning in the design thinking process uh, this was a great way to do that yeah it worked really well i was really happy with how it turned out this was our my, actually my first um seesaw activity ever so this was a big deal all right <laughs> Um, this is an example of my um, students um, are very interested in coding and they thought the only uh, coding is just code spark it is nothing else um, and so what we did is we brainstormed some questions um, about coding and what exactly it was to them they thought it was just an app and they thought that's what they had to do in order to code um, so actually the first part of it was they were um, assigned partners and um, we I incorporated um, our daily five routine with one of our cafe strategies. They first were reading to someone, which was um, a big deal in first grade because, of course, we're usually reading to self, but we chose to read to someone, um, which is a big deal. And then we um, they had to use the cafe strategy of comprehension in order to summarize their text. So they had to pick out the main ideas um, from the story. And as you can see um, on the large white piece of paper, they were um, picking the three or four main ideas of the story and illustrating them. Um, and then they coded, they were able to write the code to code dash to go to the events of the story in the order that they it took place. Um, and then they also um, retold the story once it got to um, that main event. Um, and it was just a very cool project for them to see and kind of get through the whole process of it. So I think we have a video to show you a clip of what one of the groups did. And press go. This one? We're listening to our video. Let me see the code. They have to get farther back. Get farther back. So they knew good. Uh, this was really great. Um, the the ways in which um, the learners approached the story uh, was through the pictures, which then told the story uh, and bringing the arts into them, uh, creating their story mat uh, was really fantastic because the more detail they put into the pictures, the more detail they were able to put into the story retells. Um, and this particular group, uh, this was a bit of a differentiation for this group because um, they were able to finish the actual coding for the, uh, well, we, we asked for three main parts. This group did four main parts. After the four main parts, uh, they were able to go and help other kids with um, some of their uh, coding challenges. But when they came back, um, they had Dash, when he came to a certain spot in the book, change the colors of the robot to match the colors of the pages of the book. Um, they were able to um, uh, have Dash change speed throughout the map to, uh, to um, show the blast off of the rocket when they said, Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, dash got faster. So that there are so many uh, entry points into a project like this um, that every learner can uh, can have a, a, a low floor and a high ceiling and really enter a project like this at uh, where they are is really fantastic. Um, this is uh, another uh, an example of math with using seesaw and one of um, our students showing like fractions. Um, so he's sharing the process of the like fractions, and this was able um, able let us as teachers able to give feedback. What I did here was I'm adding four sevens plus six sevens. So I colored in the four with the purple, and then the six with the um, the uh, pink. So the um, there was, it was filled up so one hole and then there's three sevens left. 
So, I'm going to write 5 equals 1 and 3 sevenths. Not really a good sound. One and three sevens. And I'm going to circle it as a way of knowing it's in front of a because it can't be out of the house. I'm going to have three, but that for itself and one, or you can't take it only have a seven except for itself and one. So, yeah. So this uh, this is just a way that our um, our teachers have taken uh, some of the analog whiteboards that they use um, in their classroom for a quick uh, kind of check for understanding, um, and then overlay the um, drawing uh, feature in Seesaw uh, as a way to um, uh, bring that whole kind of formative assessment together. They watch the videos, they get some feedback, and then they're able to um, drive instruction for the next day. Uh, so in fifth grade, my students study uh, scientific method, and uh, we started with just an observational activity where the kids built a little thing out of connects, and they took gathered some data, made some observations, and then that kind of inspired our thinking for the larger project. And so um, the spring racer you see in the center, the kids were putting together a display board something everybody I'm sure has done from time to time. It's a great way to show the process of scientific method. Um, but what I thought was really cool is the way this group decided to add the artistic uh, background and kind of walk you through um, their steps using, using that um, creativity as well. And then the final um, one, you can see they've made graphs um, using and um, uh, create a graph online and then they were able to post those graphs into Seesaw, and that's where I was able to have them really analyze and explain the results that they were seeing and um, talk more about the their individual um, conclusions from the project. So nice way to um, bring art and science and technology um, all together. A uh, final uh, slide here is um, relating to a, a project where the kids were studying simple machines and you can see one of the girls really got into the artistic element of her uh, hers glitter and paint, making an inclined plane for um, Scaredy Squirrel to get back up in his tree. Um, and then another group decided to make a lever. Uh, they worked several iterations with different materials to try to get that lever stiff enough so that when they hit one side, it, he would go flying up. And then there was one other group that got really creative. Um, and this last slide, you can see another iteration. Yeah, uh, one thing I want to add too is that uh, Scary Squirrel is a classroom favorite in first grade. And so thinking about, you know, the empathy of uh, starting the design process and really thinking about, well, what is the problem Scary Squirrel is having? And then how can we create that solution with our understanding of simple machines uh, really help drive this project. And one of the groups uh, really wanted to make an elevator. Uh, so we met for a bit uh, to talk about what kinds of materials we would need. Uh, they decided that um, they wanted their elevator to, uh, to have a, a working um, uh, up and down mechanism. So we used a uh, bird brain technology, hummingbird Arduino, and a motor. And they uh, were able to wrap a string around this motor and um, use their understanding of positive and negative numbers to make the uh, elevator go up and down. So this is just a quick example of what that looked like. So this is them working on uh, the positive and negative numbers. It's a Bluetooth connection to the keyboard or to the iPad and the Arduino. Um, this is the motor working and they had to uh, engineer that, uh, that support you saw um, for the string in order for it to go straight up and down. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting design uh, for, for the first graders. The scaredy squirrel getting the help he needs. Well, thanks everybody for uh, listening, and I hope you enjoyed some of the projects. It's really fun to work with the kids and see what they come up with. I mean, they're the ones that inspire a lot of um, the things that we do, and we just kind of follow their lead and try to come up with ways to help them make what they want to happen happen in the classroom. So.
And I'm sure you have uh, many ideas and, and wonderful projects that you have uh, going on in your classrooms too. And I encourage you to reach out to the three of us um, on Twitter uh, or Instagram um, and share those ideas because uh, that's how we grow as educators is sharing those ideas with each other. So thank you so much. Um, glad to answer any questions you have and um, we'll see you soon. Yay, so we have a couple of minutes for questions. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them in. Uh, I just want to point out, I love how you are capturing the process of learning so well with, with Seesaw and allowing students to reflect and try another iteration. And I, I love that not only are they able to reflect, but that it process is shared outside the classroom as well, which is always great. So a couple questions coming in. We'll try to get through as many as we can in the next couple minutes but you might have to be reaching out to these amazing teachers online as well. 